We continue our 2024 conference previews with a two-team conference and three teams that are not in a conference. At least not yet. Uh, the Pac-12 carries on with only Beavers and Cougars, which is going to lead to a lot of risque jokes, I would imagine. And uh, the Independents will soon be short at least a UMass when the Minutemen head to the MAC next year. Now, I don't think there's a bigger contrast between two athletic programs than Notre Dame and UMass, and yet they are both independents that play the same sports. It is quite a world. Uh, but, you know, these kind of things are what make college football great. I mean, these guys are in the same universe. They can play each other, but we don't have to pretend that they're on a level playing field, right? College football fans understand that it is what it is. Notre Dame expects to be in the playoff every year. UMass is just having fun, right? Now, before we get into these five schools, you guys should know what to do by this point. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast, because I also do shows on the pod that you won't be able to get on YouTube. And, of course, jump in the comments and let me know what you think about these teams, etc. Uh, if you want to keep up with my bonus content during the season, of course, my picks as I make them, bonus podcasts, stat projections. I'm going to have a lot of graphs and all sorts of stuff on there. Interesting stuff. You can sign up at bettingcfb.com. It is five bucks a month or 50 bucks for the year. Uh, for each of these team previews, I'm going to give you three reasons why they might go over and three reasons why they might go under the win total. And I'm going to give you the number of projected wins from my numbers. So let's go ahead and dive into it. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The current win total sits at 10 and a half. That is the same as the opener. You've got odds of plus 142 to go over. That is 41.32% implied probability. And minus 176 to go under. That is implied probability of 63.77%. So the favorite here, certainly the under, looks like, uh, you know, it will say Vegas uh, expects them to go 10 and 2. Now, for why Notre Dame might go over their win total. Number one, Riley Leonard's dual threat capability. I mean, it could provide the Irish with a pretty dynamic offensive boost, especially if he has fully recovered from, you know, the surgeries and whatnot. Uh, and, and he can build on his previous success at Duke. He's going to have new offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock, who came over from LSU, to help him out with that. Uh, number two, the defense is anchored by. You know, experienced and talented players like Benjamin Morrison, Xavier Watts, uh, they're going to create a formidable unit that can keep games within reach. And then number three, the wide receiver core. It's been bolstered in uh, by, by transfers, offering new and explosive options that could elevate the passing game and make the offense a bit more versatile. Now, as far as why Notre Dame might not go over the win total, number one has got to be Leonard's health. Right, I mean it's a it's a question mark, and if he's not 100, percent the offense could struggle to find some consistency there. Uh, number two, the departure of key offensive linemen like Joe Alt and Blake Fisher that could lead to some protection issues. Uh, it certainly wouldn't help with Leonard's health as far as keeping him on the field, and it really doesn't help that the starting left tackle was injured in fall camp and he's out for the year. Uh, number three, the schedule does include a few challenging matchups, uh, particularly the opener against Texas A&M on the road, and then you got Florida State at home in November and USC at the end of the year. Uh, as far as Notre Dame, I mean, I've got their rating as number seven in the country. Uh, projected wins are 10.22, so slightly under the 10.5, with 12 games as projected favorites and three toss-ups. So they, to me, they are a projected favorite in every single game on the schedule. Only three of them expected to be within one score. So I think, I think they're going to have a good year. Uh, we'll see what Marcus Freeman can continue to do in South Bend. Moving on, the Yukon Huskies. Current win total is 4.5. That is the same as the opener had moved. Odds of minus 124 to go over. That's 55.36% implied probability. And plus 102 to go under. That's implied probability of 49.5%. Now, for why UConn might go over their win total. Uh, Jim Mora has been very aggressive in the transfer portal. He brought in 20 new players. That includes uh, former high three or four-star recruits at a bunch of the skill positions. And that could be enough to elevate the team's overall talent. Number two, the defense shows potential for further improvement with eight of the 14 players who saw 300-plus snaps returning and the addition of pretty strong transfers like Jaden McDonald uh, from Troy and Julian Simon from Tulsa. 
Uh, number three, the schedule features several winnable games, particularly in the middle stretch. You got home games against FAU, uh, Buffalo, and Temple. Uh, stuff like that is going to provide a realistic path to maybe surpassing their win total. Uh, a lot of home games right there in the middle. I mean, this is a this is a wild setup. They don't have another home game after November 2nd. Um, they don't play a, a single road game from September 21st through November. Pretty wild how they were able to get this done, to be completely honest. Now, as far as why UConn might not go over that win total, the Huskies' offense is still looking for some stability, especially at the quarterback position. And you got uncertainties, you know, surrounding whether or not Nick Evers or Joe Fagnano can effectively lead the team. If if that doesn't figure itself out, that's going to be a problem. Number two, the offensive line uh, might not have what it takes to support a consistent offensive stack, uh, which which could hinder both the passing and the running games here. So, I would I would pay attention to that. And then number three, despite all those transfer additions, um, the Huskies roster is still not where the coach really wants it to be. And, you know, you don't have a lot of cohesion among these new players. Something like that could result in, you know, underperformance. So I would, yeah, I I would be wary of this team. Uh, I've got them rated number 118 in the country. Projected wins, I've got 5.16. So that's over. Um, and I've got them projected as a favorite in three games with eight toss-up games. So a lot of potential one-score games here. I, there's there's a strong chance that they could go over the four and a half. Uh, but like I said, I am, I'm wary. Uh, they got Maryland and Duke early in the season. I don't expect those to go well. But, I mean, you never know. You never know with this bunch. The UMass Minutemen are next up. And the current win total is three and a half. That's the same as the opener. Odds minus 115 to go over. Uh, that's 53.49%. And minus 105 to go under. That is 51.22% implied probability. Now, as far as why UMass might go over the win total, Don Brown heading into year three, he has infused the roster with way more talent through the transfer portal. Uh, he's brought in 10 former blue chippers and several smaller school playmakers, the talent level looks a lot better than it did when he got there. Number two, the return of quarterback Tyson Fomashan. Uh, You've got a bolstered receiving core. Uh, you got guys like Frank Ladson coming in from Miami, Keyshawn Brown coming in from Duquesne. Those guys could absolutely be the explosive pieces that they need to get that offense moving. Uh, Number three, the schedule. It does include several winnable games early in the season. You got Eastern Michigan at home. Uh, You got Central Connecticut State in week four. You know, it sets them up for a potential run at getting past this win total relatively early. Uh, You look at the back end of that schedule, November is not going to be good to them. Not going to be good. Now, as far as why UMass might not go over the win total, despite all of the talent that's coming in, they do face some pretty significant losses. They got eight starters leaving. That's key players on both sides of the ball. And that's never a good thing when you're trying to build some some cohesion, right? Number two, the defense, while certainly aggressive under Don Brown, it did struggle against the run last year, and it still might not have the the size or the depth to make some big improvements, especially when you got opponents like Mississippi State, Georgia, and whatnot later in the year, like Liberty as well. Uh, those are going to be that's that's going to be pretty rough. And so they got Missouri at home in the middle of the year. I mean, that's just that's bananas. Number three, the offense, although improved, uh, it does still lack proven effectiveness, right? Um, You know, relying heavily on transfers might not yield immediate results. So if you get some inconsistency throughout the season, that could be a big part of it. That could be a big part. Uh, I've got them rated nationally number 126. Projected wins, I've got at 4.15, which is an over. Uh, I get four games as projected favorites here, as you can see on the screen. Uh, two of them look like gimmies against Wagner and Central Connecticut, uh, Connecticut State. Uh, then I got three toss-up games, so a lot of losses on the schedule. I mean, this one's tough. Uh, I don't feel great about UMass this season. Certainly don't. Tickets to everything are expensive these days, and I know you're like me. You want to catch a big game or a concert, maybe even tickets to a show. 
Why not save some money every time you buy tickets? Visit TicketSmarter.com or use the Ticket Smarter mobile app and use the promo code WCE10, that's WCE10, to save $10 on any order of $100 or more, or use WCE20, that's WCE20, to save $20 on an order of $300 or more. It's not a one-time sign-up bonus or anything. Seriously, every time you buy tickets, you can save money on already great deals. So do yourself a favor. Think smarter with Ticket Smarter. All right, let's move into the Pack 2. We'll start with the Oregon State Beavers. Current win total, 7.5. That is the same as the opener. You got odds of plus 106 to go over. Uh, and prob- probability there is 48.54% and minus 130 to go under. Implied probability there is 56.52%. Now, why Oregon State might go over their win total? Number one, new coach Trent Bray. He uh, he inherits a team that has experienced a bunch of recent success, uh, three consecutive winning seasons. And, you know, there's enough talent to compete, especially with a promising young quarterback. Um, well, let's not say young. Ben Goldbrinson. Uh, is not exactly young. And then you got Idaho transfer Giovanni McCoy. So you've got options there. That's certainly a good thing. Um, despite a significant roster overhaul, the Beaver schedule is pretty favorable. SP Plus projects them as favorites in 9 out of 12 games. I've got them a favorite in 9 out of 12 games. Um, the addition of transfers like Jam Griffin from Ole Miss, Kobe Singleton from Liberty, uh, those are certainly going to bolster some of those key positions there. And then number three, the the secondary. You got standout corners, uh, Jaden Robinson, Kobe Singleton. They should provide a solid foundation for a defense that's, you know, under Bray, it's looking to maintain its aggressive style uh, because that's what Bray likes to do. Uh, we'll see if he's got the depth to be able to do that kind of stuff this year, but I I would imagine he will. Now, as far as why they might not go over their win total, you lose Jonathan Smith, the head coach. You lose the quarterback, DJU, uh, several key starters. Damian Martinez uh, left for Miami. Uh, you got major uncertainties here, especially considering that they're like 127 in returning production. Uh, the defensive front, I mean, it's that front six faces a complete overhaul. You got nine players who logged uh, significant snaps last year who are gone. Uh, that could lead to struggles against both the run and the pass, really, because I don't know if you got anybody that can get after the quarterback. Uh, number three, there's talent on the roster, um, but the the significant reliance on transfers and newcomers along with a first-year head coach that may not know exactly how to gel all that together, that's going to be a tricky situation, uh, especially against tougher opponents, right? you got Oregon on the schedule. you got Boise State at the end of the year, stuff like that. Now, I'd imagine by the end of the year, you've probably got that figured out. But again, this is still a first-time head coach, a first-year head coach. It's going to be interesting. Uh, as far as their rating, I've got them nationally rated number 47. Projected wins, I've got at 7.78, which is slightly over the win total. Got nine games as a projected favorite and six toss-ups here. So toss-ups, for anybody that doesn't know, I don't think I've explained on this video, any game that is within one score in either direction. I mean, it's you can basically call it a coin flip, right? Um, let's move on. Last one, Washington State. The Cougars, their current win total is 7.5. That is the same as Oregon State. It is the same as the opener. This line has not moved. You got odds of minus 105 to go over, that's 51.22%, and minus 115 to go under, that is 53.49% implied probability. Now, why Washington State might go over their win total? Number one, head coach Jake Dickert, he has established a solid foundation here. The team's got a a pretty nice schedule when you look at it. Uh, It projects them as favorites in in most games with a, a really manageable Mountain West slate. So, not... Not as bad as it could have been. Number two, the offensive line. It does return four starters. It, you know, that's certainly going to help with stability. Um, and it'll help. I think John Mateer, uh is the, I think he was announced as the starter uh, today, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken. I, I'll figure that out later. But uh, both of the quarterbacks, uh, the transfer, the FCS transfer that came in, Zevi, I think was his name. Um, they both have potential to emerge as really good, reliable quarterbacks. And then number three, You've got an infusion of FBS and FCS transfer talent. Uh, you got Chris Hudson coming in from Oregon, wide receiver there. Defensive end Cyrus Webster coming in from Utah Tech. Uh, they they bolstered key positions with players that are capable of making an impact pretty quickly. 
Uh, and I feel like Jake Dickert, I mean, he's been around for a while. He knows what's going on. Uh, he might know how to gel that better than, than what Oregon State's got going on uh, with first-year coach Tyler Bray. Now, why they might not go over their win total? They lost significant production on both sides of the ball. Uh, Cam Ward, the quarterback, is gone. You got several key defensive players gone. Uh, it's going to be challenging, I think is a good word, to maintain their previous level of performance. Um, number two, the skill possessions, especially running back, wide receiver. Living in Memphis is so terrible. That's I, I feel like I'm going to sneeze just right in the middle of trying to talk. Um, the skill positions, right? Running back, wide receiver, it, it's a bunch of new faces. Are they going to be able to, you know, gel? Are they going to be able to produce? Uh, we don't know. I mean, this is a whole new spot. Um, and that could over, that could impact the overall, offen- eh, overall offensive output here. Uh, number three, defensive concerns. Those are prominent. Now, Jake Dickert is a good defensive mind, uh, but you got the departure of standout edge rushers. you got a thin cornerback unit, you know, potentially leading to vulnerabilities against some pretty strong offensive teams that are on this schedule. I mean, you got Fresno on here. Uh, Hawaii looks like they're going to be better. San Diego State, who knows with Sean Lewis. Uh, you got Oregon State, who we think should be okay. Uh, but then at the early part of the schedule, Texas Tech and Washington and Boise State are all there. I mean, that's rough. That's rough. Uh, their their rating is number 57 nationally, uh, at least according to my my stats. Uh, projected wins are 7.76, so I've got them slightly over as well. Uh, but I've only got them a favorite in seven games, uh, and I've got them a uh, I've got them six toss up games here. But look at that schedule. I mean, you, you got Texas Tech at home. You'd start out with Portland State, build up a little confidence. Texas Tech at home, Washington on a neutral, then San Jose State comes in, and then you go to Boise by week to Fresno State. Hawaii comes in at San Diego State. I mean, it's it's just one thing after the other. Now you do get lucky with uh, Utah State, New Mexico. I mean, closing the year with Wyoming, that is uh, that is going to be pretty pretty rough. All right, so there's no conference title game for any of these five teams, and outside of Notre Dame, the odds to make the playoff are pretty slim. But you know, every single one of these teams should at least be interesting to keep up with. Now, I imagine there's going to be more on the realignment front with Oregon State, Washington State. Uh, and UConn, UMass is already heading to the MAC in 2025. Notre Dame, they ain't going nowhere. They're apparently going to be independent for as long as they can be. I would imagine in 2030, 2031, they'll probably be a part of whatever the new college football Super League is going to be whenever that comes to fruition. But uh, but for now, you know, Notre Dame's going to stay independent. I would imagine everybody else uh, ends up finding a home within the next couple of years. So let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, Like the video, subscribe to the channel and the podcast. And of course, if you want to help me out, if you want to support the show, you can become a member at bettingcfb.com. For Winning Cures Everything, God bless college football, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.